but I won't go into details in this project. I will jump to another project, because we are talking about stage and difficult tasks, uh, which was, in a way, the first project I did um, that was more documentary, but based on the history of my country. I was born in Argentina during the dictatorship. Uh, which lasted from 60, uh, 76 to 83. And I decided to do a piece in which my generation, people who were born until under this um, dictatorship, were reconstructing the life of their parents. And it was people coming from very different backgrounds, um, sons and daughters of um, policemen or um, people who went to exile, like intellectuals who went to exile, or people who, were, who disappeared, journalists who disappeared. So it was a very wide range of people. There were six people on stage. And they were reconstructing the life of their parents with the help of photographs, uh, documents, um, recordings, all kind of um, art. I mean, there was this kind of, um, we were creating an archive in a way with all these different stories. And they were performing, in a way, parts of the life of their parents. I will show you just a um, little bit of a video so you can understand more. Now we can put them <laughs> Este es el álbum de las fotos de mi infancia. Mi tío, mi abuelo y mi padre.
esto un problema que hemos estado en la de esto. Mi hijo tiene ahora la misma edad aproximadamente que tenía yo cuando perdía mi padre. Bueno, The stories that they tell is the stories of the actors. I mean, they are sharing their stories and their um, personal archive, like photos and recordings. Um, and so it was a big work of, of research, in a way, to, to reconstruct the stories of the parents because um, also it was very interesting because we were not only reconstructing the real stories, so to say, like the truths, um, but also the fictions that we were told. So, for example, the Carla, who is telling this story about how his father got killed um, in this confrontation between the guerrilla and the military people. In fact, she had four stories. I mean, until she she had like the real story, so to say. Um, her, her, her family told her that her father died in a car crash when she was little. Then when she was 14, she heard that her father was in, an, in a confrontation with the military because of a discussion in the family. Um, and then they told her he died like very fast in a confrontation. But then like years later, she found a letter that was hidden in a toy uh, from the party, which was um, ERP, which was like, um, yeah, Ejército Revolucionario del Pueblo, um, uh, that was saying that in fact the people who got into this confrontation between the military and the, and the guerrilla were the people who were wounded, were taken, um, they were killed, like they were. Um, Fusilados, shot. Yeah, they were shot and they cut their hands uh, to know who they were. So, in fact, the story is getting, you know, <laughs> like really harder and harder as, 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 as she is getting older. So, but when we were doing the piece, we were reconstructing all these stories because all these fictions, in a way, all, all these stories that were told are our past. So. It's not that the this, this story, the final story, the real story, the truth behind it, the only past. The past is made of all these layers of fictions and stories that are told. Um, and it was, um, it was a very important piece for, for all of us, I think, for, for our generation. And, and, and in fact, 
Um, we did the piece for many years and we traveled a lot with the piece. Um, and it became a kind of portrait of, I mean, we thought we were talking about the generations of the, of the 70s, the generation of the past, but in fact it was, an 80s, but in fact it was out about ourselves, about who, who we were, you know, who we are, like how we are also constructed and made of this past. Um, so people say, oh, well, there is this piece about the 70s. It's not a piece about the 70s, it's a piece about today. It's about how we are constructed um, by all these stories of our past and what it means to be born under this um, cloud of fictions and stories and secrets and family, you know, um, uh, untold stories. Um, And it was the first time, in fact, because there was a tradition in Argentina of pieces that were talking about this past. Um, in fact, there was a kind of program that was called Teatro por la Identidad, Theatre for Identity. But in fact, it, it was mainly fiction made with actors, but it was always like, there was this, for a long time, there was the need to prove that these crimes happened. You know what I mean? Like that there was the need of like, and making theatre pieces and artworks that proved because there was still like for a long time like this discussion that it wasn't really like an extermination, it was a fight, you know, it was a war between two sides. No, it wasn't a war between two sides, it was a state terrorism, you know, like people were killed and, uh, and um, tortured and um, by the state, I mean by the military government at that time. But I felt that our generation was relieved from the obligation to, you know, to, to make these statements that this really happened and we could work more with all this, with the fictional part of it, with the stories that are not, um, that were never told because they were, they, I mean, the theater was taking care of something else that was to prove, you know, that this really happened, or to make it public, to make it known. Um, and it was the first time, in fact, that on stage we had people from different backgrounds together. And this was a very like polemic thing to do, because they would say, no, what, how can you put together the daughter of a man who was working for the secret service and the daughter of, um, of a man who was killed by the military government? You can't do that. But in fact, you know, the daughters, I mean, the sons and daughters are not responsible for what their parents do, but it's still in the minds of the people, you know, there is this kind of like, um, you're responsible for your parents' crimes in a way, you know what I mean? So, um, and it was the first time that the daughter of a repressor, you say, like, um, say like that, was making a public statement saying like, this is what my father did, you know, he kidnapped uh, a kid from a, um, from a detention camp, from a torture camp, uh, Esma, and pretended it was his own. That's what she's telling, you know? And that's a story that was very uh, common in Argentina. There's um, 500 kids that were taken away and given to other families, pretending it was their own. So, like, um, when they were like 25 or 30, even now, like last week's, a new, the children was discovered, you know, somebody who's 40 and realized that he is in fact, or she is in fact the daughter of somebody who was killed by the military. So her own life was a fiction. So there is this whole, you know, like idea of these fictions that, that were told that are present until today. Um, and it was the first time that the daughter of, um, of someone from the military or, uh, I mean, the state side was saying, this is my father, this is what he did, I have nothing to do with him, you know, like, and I can say publicly because this never happened before. Now there is a lot of people like the daughter of the Chicolas, which is another professor who took like this statement and said uh, that she is against what her father did, but this was not very, it was never told before on stage. So, um, 